afternoon, ladies. Thank you for coming to listen to me. And I'm going to present to you today what is the flipped classroom. And that was my inquiry project for 2014. I worked in a group with two other ladies, uh, Spanish teachers as well, Marlene Vicalde from Tyrone Middle School and Esther Gonzalez Wright from Seminole High School. But unfortunately, I couldn't present with them due to the senior uh, reflection ceremony that day, so that is why I'm here today presenting my topic. So, flipping the classroom is a concept that is, is, it's been around for a while, and my first inquiry project last year was in how to uh, implement FLIP in the foreign language classroom. And this year, I follow up with FLIP 2.0, how will implementing the FLIP classroom model affect my students' achievement and guide my instruction in terms of a whole instructing like that in a whole year. Last year, I flipped my Spanish three class, uh, my Spanish three class, and I saw uh, an improvement in terms of grades and in terms of more than anything else, the use of the language, and that's why I wanted to use it for the whole school year. And I can, I can say that not only did the grades were affected in a positive way, the uh, performance task that the students completed, they could use the language much better than the students that I have had in the past that learned <coughs> Spanish. So just so you understand what flipping means, if you see the little flip that is upside down on the top, that's pretty much it. It's like turning education upside down. You, uh, instead of lecturing in the classroom like I'm doing to you right now, what happens is that that instruction goes on at home or at the library or wherever the kids can access your instruction that you're going to post online. And the way that it works, um, you assign your lectures at home through computers. It could be a PowerPoint, it could be a video, it could be notes, it could be an article that they read and you tell them what to do from it. It could be anything at all. In, my ca in our case, we all uh, use the flip model to teach the um, grammar at home. So the kids will take notes at home on the grammar concept and then they will come to school and in school all they do is apply it, doing performance-based tasks. Um, for example, uh, the in the first unit, the students took notes on using the imperfect as a review from Spanish 3 in my Spanish 4 class and they took those notes and when they came in class, they worked on a project talking about what they did when they were a child. So. I didn't have to go on and stand in front of the class and explain to them this is how you conjugate the verbs or anything because they already did that. And the beauty of it is that they do it at their own time, mm -hmm. uh, their own pace. I don't have I don't have to hear the can you repeat that slide? Can you go back? I need more time. We all heard that, and it's just so at this point the, the student has ownership of their learning on their learning, and they can do it. Um, for science teachers, for example, it would be the same kind of concept. This actually started when we when we did our inquiry project last year. We read on two teachers in Colorado that they flipped a chemistry classroom. And they, the way that they flipped, they flipped for mastery. So the students would do every lesson at their own pace and then they would just come in and they would test. And if they pass, they're done. And they can move on. So actually, it's, everything is turning to the student, and you do all the work up front, you upload all your work, you upload all your videos, anything that you have to do, and then in the classroom you become the facilitator. And that's what flipping is all about. So, um, if you see the traditional classroom, the lecture and assigning homework happens in, in the classroom, and then the kids go home and they have to complete the homework. But how many times your kids come back and say, why do you know how to do your homework? With flipping, that changes. Because actually, the homework technically is going over notes and writing notes down and learning that, and then they come into the classroom and they apply that knowledge. And you're there to facilitate. 
Uh, some of the activities that I do with them, for example, when we're starting, will be as simple as coming in and having to do a book exercise. But then they sit in groups and they can do it collaboratively. And that way, if they don't know, they have me as a source and they have their uh, classmates as a source as well. So the instructional video could be anything. It could be a PowerPoint. It could be a video of someone else doing. And in our case, we found that using, that using what's already online is much easier than us trying to produce uh, original stuff. Could we produce original? Of course we, we could, but it, at this point, since it, we're in like a beginning stage and still developing everything, it's easier just to do it that way. But anybody can do a video and just record yourself like I'm doing right now <laughs> so you can present the ideas to the kids. Now, the, very, the most important thing is, is not just throw it out to the kids and say, yeah, watch this video and take notes. You have to model it. You have to stay, you have to do it with them. The first time you take notes with them and you show them and you just do what the educational talk, you go, oh, so look, I'm going to look at this. This is the PowerPoint that I'm looking at. And look what it says, Flip Classroom Made Easy. That is the title of this note that I'm taking today, Flip Classroom. And I also, what is the Flip Classroom? And I will show them. Being that I'm an avid teacher, I make them take Cornell notes on everything. And I teach the, the Cornell notes. And I grade the Cornell notes. The, the homework becomes like a very high grade because if they don't do the homework, they cannot come in and practice. For example, um, if I'm teaching the vocabulary of the body and they go home and they take notes on the vocabulary of the body and they come to class, they have to turn in those notes, show me that they took the notes, I grade them. I, nor I normally make them out of 100 points, the homework, and then I make <coughs> them practice. So I will put them in groups, throw a roll of paper on the floor, they have to draw the body and then draw everything. Now let's say you didn't do your homework so you will sit aside, you will have to sit in a computer, take the notes while everybody's, because everybody will have fun. I will make sure that my activities are fun so they can be engaging and they say, well, if I don't do my homework, then I can come to class and I cannot perform. So it's really important that you develop that relationship with the kids, that they understand the importance of doing the homework and once they realize it, I noticed this year in my Spanish for kids, the first set of notes that I, that I assigned to them, I had three kids that did not do them at all. So, I'm sorry, I had 53% of them completed it on time. And then I had four kids that did not complete it, and then three of them chose to do them late, and I gave them half credit for it. And that also, they, it still shows that they get they get some points for the work that they do, and the important thing is that they learn the material because if they're not doing that at home, they, they're not going to learn it because I'm only facilitating, and I will go back to fill in the blanks on questions that they might have. This is not that I just sit in the classroom and eat bumblebees. On the contrary, I'm always moving around and facilitating and creating activities that they can do to have fun. So, like if, if you see at the flipped classroom side, um, they, they watch the videos after I model in the classroom how to take notes and go over them with them. Then I let them loose and they have to do that. And maybe the first two set of notes that they do, I will work a little bit more in detail with them. But after that, they know. They come in, they turn in their notes, and I'm at a point that I can look at them. I know exactly what I assigned, so I know what I wanted to see. I go over what it is that they have any questions on, make sure that I touch on anything that I've seen wrong in the notes or something like that. And then I give activities to practice on it. So what's happening is the kid that normally can do homework because they didn't understand it, they've already worked on it once at home. They've come and asked questions if they had at home. They've worked with partners if they have to work with, if they work with partners, they have me there to facilitate so they're learning and it's, the process is much easier. And I can do conferencing with my students, especially with the higher levels. If I give an assignment, a writing assignment, I can sit with them and go over it with them, separate while other people are doing other stuff. 
So it, it liberates my time and I can actually target practice specialty things, special things that I see that are not working. Do you have any questions? Um, I was uh, I was wondering because then I do sort of like a flipped classroom because I do the same. I assign them uh, the notes so to complement it I should put uh, a video, right? Yes. So then they can go home and it will be kind of like reinforcing? Exactly. Okay. And then so when they come to the classroom they're just doing exercises. Practice. Okay. Practice, okay. practice, 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 so that okay. they can okay. master like the language better. I didn't know that was called flip. Thank you. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Yes. What about low-level kids? Do they do well with it? Yes, because technically what you're doing is differentiating instruction, and everybody's working at their own time. So let's say I have Mary and I have Paul, but Paul needs to be repeat, work on something three times Mm -hmm. have extended time to test or have extended time to do so now he can work at his own time and Mary doesn't have to suffer because and then nobody is in anybody's case because they're actually working at their own pace. And the, the exercises are from the textbook? Could be anything you want to do. And then you can also differentiate it by because one of the things that I like doing is having different levels in the classroom, so that will definitely... That will definitely that will, be that will cater to that because... Perfect, perfect. Exactly. Okay. Would you help me do some of, of the, course. you know, videos or anything? Okay. It's really easy. Very good. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like it.